Welcome, it's Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It is the 1st of April, 2022, Asia time. Those of us who are in uh, North America, it's not quite yet the 1st of April, but that's okay. We're gonna call it the 1st of April and go from there. Uh, topics I've got on the agenda, news, the 2.332.2 change log and upgrade guide, she code Africa Contributhon, and open PRs. Those are the only ones I had. Uh, Diraj, are there any topics you want to add? Meg, are there any topics you want to add? Nothing for me, thank you. No, nothing from my side. Okay. All right. Well, so. Hey, Kristen. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Good Hi, place. Kristen. So, Kristen, just checked. Are there any topics you want to add to the agenda? Um, no. Okay, great. All right. So, um, then let's let's talk first about the news. So a, a zero day remote code execution vulnerability was disclosed in the spring security framework one or two days ago. And uh, naturally there's going to be instant interest because the Jenkins project uses the spring framework. Our security team and our infrastructure team have both, our security team and our, infrastructure team have both done the analysis and found that Jenkins is not vulnerable. So grateful for that. Excellent news. Oh, that is so good. Yes, because otherwise it was going to be a very busy frantic period. Yes. So it was it was busy enough for the security and the infra team without making it busy for the rest of us. Yes. So uh, very good. It's been tweeted. It's been posted on LinkedIn. It's on the blog. And so, and it's been posted to community.jenkins.io. So we've got multiple locations for it. If people have questions or concerns, this start discussion link here at the bottom will open them into this page and let them have a conversation about it. Cool. So the, it's, it's very nice, this integration between community.jenkins.io and the blog. Very nice. Any any questions on that? Okay, next topic then. Um, the two dot three three two dot two change log. The this is let's start with the why. Uh, next Wednesday <laughs> is the release of two dot three three two dot two. And so and that will include several interesting or set interesting it will include some backports so so we've got them they have been backported and we can find them here they're visible pretty quickly uh, the nothing that's terribly frightening but need entries in the change log no upgrade guide it'll be a simple short upgrade guide i started the work on it today but did not finish it I started the work with Kevin Martins. So he and I were paired together and uh, gave him an introduction to what it's like writing a change log. Uh, Kevin's based in Boston area, so he won't join us in these meetings, but um, just so you're aware, he's gonna be right, doing more writing for Jenkins. Fabulous. Uh, that one I will at, will ask for uh, reviews probably tomorrow. So cool. um, within the next 24 hours, it's not, Kevin and I had to do a, a number of, oh, whoops, that's missing. That's missing exercises that detected problems in the weekly change log that we've got to fix. So reviews are coming. Any other questions? Is there a good time that we want to make sure that that we want to get our review in? Oh yeah, yeah. So I will I will merge the change log. Mark will merge the change log by Monday. Okay, awesome, good, good. I just didn't want to want to make sure that we had we got it in before yeah. <laughs> to actually be helpful. So right, yeah. So so I will, uh, given that most of it is copying from existing change logs it should be a relatively clean exercise, but um, 
as I noted, there are some things that we detected were missing in weekly and need to be mentioned or need some further thought. So, so if you can review before Monday, before, let's say before end of your working day Monday, whatever your working day means Monday. So for Diraj, that means sometime Sunday, my, my world, right? And for the rest of us, whenever you're, you're working on Monday, if you can give your comments, I'll plan to merge at end of my working day Monday. Terrific. Um, we are, on this story, we are continuing to get people who, who don't read change logs and upgrade guides. And there's no, no match for that, no magic for that. Just had another one in community.jenkins.io saying, hey, my th system's broken. I upgraded. I'm using these old plugins. And the upgrade guide says you must upgrade your plugins. OK. Anything else on change log and upgrade guide? OK, next topic then, SheCode Africa Contributhon. Uh, starting soon, uh, it was announced in social media uh, recently, but I haven't seen an announcement to us. Uh, so the Jenkins project has been selected. I learned that today from Elizabeth in the European office hours. Are there other Along projects that they're doing too, or are we, is Jenkins the only one? No, there are several others, more than, more apparently than last year. Oh, good. So she, the way she described it, it was, I think four or five projects, whereas last year, I think we only had three. Okay, cool. So, so uh, now the, I, they haven't, I don't think they've announced the, uh, the, the selected um, participants, right? So they haven't announced those yet and they have, have not yet announced the, uh, the start of the bonding period, the uh, get to know each other period where they introduce them to Git and we do some presentations about various things about our projects. Are we gonna use GitOps for this, for the work or are we going to, uh, was good, that the thing? Good question. I don't think so in this case, because so the, in, in this case, the project ideas were fit within, were within typical Jenkins framework, uh, typical Jenkins, therefore plugins, core, core, core et cetera. So they won't be anything str strongly coupled to, to a GitOps deployment methodology. Okay, I was saying the problem was that last year, because everybody has Windows systems, often old Windows oh, systems oh, are underpowered. I see. Okay, you weren't asking. Okay, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, can the participants? I think what you're really asking is, can the participants use a hosted um, IDE, a hosted development environment? Okay, yeah. And and that is oh dear, what's it? What's the name of that? Git Pod. Git Pod. That's it. Yeah. I okay. Sleep deprived. Yes. Yeah. And we think so. Uh, John Mark Messon has done it and shown that it's usable for plugin development. He's, he's shown and regularly uses it for Jenkins.io development. So for documentation development. Okay. Uh, okay. I, and let's see, and Darren Pope showed that it can be used for Jenkins core development. Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so, and docs development. And Darren showed using it for um, core, Jenkins core. So it's, it's, there, are, there are some limitations, I'm sure. Uh, one of the limitations is how many hours you can use it in a month. And, but given that this is an open source use, these contributors can ask to be made open source contributors and then they get more time. Cool. Yeah, good question. Thanks for asking. And and that will be one of the things we will introduce for them is, hey, here's how you use Gitpod. Good. Okay. Anything else on SheCode Africa? Yes, just a doubt. 
see it written here that have not announced the selected participants. So is the selection process of the candidates is within the organizers or the Jenkins? Oh, it's it's they are selected by She Code Africa. Good question. So your question is okay. who selects the participants, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And the answer is uh, She Code Africa does. Oh, okay. And the reason they do that rather than having somebody else do it is that assures them a time, a local time zone evaluation, and they can be much more aware of these women's particular needs uh, environment wise. Hey, do they have reasonable internet access? Do they have access to the right computer? Those kinds of things. Okay, sounds good. Great. All right. I guess GSAC is off the agenda because you have the separate meetings going. Uh, oh, well, we can certainly talk about GSOC if you'd like. That's that's a good one to, if there are topics we'd like to discuss, I'm happy to discuss them. The GSOC office hour starts in uh, in 45 minutes. Right. And then- I was wondering, do we have any issues, the big brouhaha about the countries that we can't accept participants from this year? We, it's a good question. Okay, so let's talk to that one and let's, so GSOC rules uh, forbid participants. Uh, so those who might be receiving, who would receive a reimbursement, right? I think it's all participants, period. Well, hang on just a minute. I'm not so sure. I don't know. Yeah, let's, I've been let's, reading the let's get the there. So, list. Yeah. so they definitely forbid participants um, from embargoed countries yes and that includes russia belarus belarus yeah belarus is am i pronouncing it wrong i, I don't know yeah so Bel and then um north korea oh yeah it's right north korea Seems and it's I, like there's a, a third one associated with the current mess but yeah so ukraine? not not limited from ukraine no. But oh. from a, a place Crimea that is, region. what's that? Crimea region. Uh, it could be. Or I'm not sure. Uh, that's that's where <laughs> there are some there are some rules that they've they've noted. And when I say participants here, what I really mean is anyone who would receive a reimbursement, and that includes mentors, right? So this would lock mentors out if they are residing in one of the embargoed countries. But now, it notice, seems to lock mentors out even if they're not getting reimbursed. Um, I think, I'm not sure. I Yes, yes, I think, well, it's it's that if they, if, if anyone who would potentially, let's put it that way. Now, maybe, you know, let's just put it this way. Let's, let's take this out because I think you're right, Meg, just period anyone, so it could be mentors, uh, participants, et cetera. If, you're, if you live in an embargoed country, you are not allowed. Right, and, and actually it's important that you say living in as opposed to from. Right, right, and, and that's the thing is, is residing in the embargoed country is the thing, not, uh, not citizen of. Right. Also, and are they not allowed to participate, or they're not? They are allowed to participate, but not allowed to get the reimbursement. No, it's it, as far as I can tell. They well, and that'd be one where I'd have to refer to the list. But I thought it was that they're not allowed to, um, not allowed to to participate in any way. They, they've said, hey, we have to ban them. Okay. At least from the Jenkins Project perspective, I don't think that we have any um, interest right now or from a potential student who we would have to say, um, unfortunately, we can't, we can't, or you can't participate. So I haven't seen, at least like me personally, seeing any of this stuff, I haven't seen anybody um, do that so that's 
That's good. It, it's good. Is it good? Good from the, I would hate, you know, it's always very upsetting to have to tell somebody. Right. You know, you're starting to work. It's like, so yeah. luckily we haven't, we haven't had to do that. <laughs> yet. So. Right. So now in, in years past, I think we have had at least one or two applicants that might have been affected. But right now, the, the vast majority of our applicants are from, uh, from India and the Indian subcontinent. Uh, a few, I think we have from, from North America. So as far as I can tell, Kristen's right. We don't have, I'm not aware of any that are affected by the, the, uh, the, the embargo. Right. Kind of a shame that Jenkins isn't impactful in those countries, but well, right now, now it's convenient. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like, I'm just, yeah, I would, I would, I don't know, for me, there's like the awkwardness of having to say, so. <laughs> right. Oh, we really like your proposal. <laughs> well, on the mentors list, there's been more people who want to be mentors that are upset about it. Mm -hmm. and, and understandably so, right? Because, right? because they, many of us know great contributors who, who are from one of the embargo locations who've been serious, seriously valuable contributors to Jenkins over many years. Right. Hi. Yep. All right. Anything else on Google Summer of Code? Yep. Okay. Next topic we had was open PRs. Although, right. oh, go ahead, Meg. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm open to say, hey, we'll, we'll call this one pause, not look at it, because I'm not sure that Meg's, Meg's level of, of brain power and my level of brain power are ready to do much on it. I take it there's no been no movement on that great big security one, right? There has not. No. Nope. That one worries me that that's going to get harder and harder because we keep adding stuff. Yeah. It, can, can we get, get a good, uh, or is there any way to break it down? Or like, is, is there some way that we can That's maybe... the reason why it's so big is because, yeah. it, you know, I did everything I could to put like any new you know, new work that was controversial oh. or something. But that's a problem when you start moving documentation around it. Yeah. Just, you try yourself in knots with little ones, but. And yeah, I know, I'm just like, man, we need to maybe just say like, this is the, this meeting, this is what we're doing. <laughs> like, I don't know, like maybe maybe next meeting or. And and part of it is because it's so, it's security. I mean, Daniel and Vodak have been over it a couple of times, but we need their blessing and they keep getting called off onto higher priority things. Right. So, Meg, it was oh god, restructure security, security section. section. Yes. Right. So, and let's just double check. I don't think we've got. Yeah, it's right now got a oh, conflict. No. <laughs> That's text, textual conflicts we can we can handle, but it it hints that there is the danger that was concerning for Meg is real now. Right. If we've got conflicts that says obviously something is going on there well it's about the third time it's happened the others i had gone in and fixed them mm -hmm. um but we've you know we're getting big changes like um and i well i did upgrade this then for the fact like if you could no longer choose to uh not use the agent controller filter that it got restructured for that but that i mean some of these were getting into changes that are non-trivial right no. Okay. So, so Kristen, back to your idea. Should we? The, the challenge for me with us taking this one on is really there is a there is a level that the security team needs to agree to to the the change because it's security right. related content. Yeah. Is there? Do they have a meeting? They they do not they oh, okay. they they are just okay. fully loaded on delivering security capabilities. For yeah, Jenkins, okay. I, I like, didn't know if they had like a sync like this or something. One. Yes, exactly. yes, yes. <laughs> I didn't know if they had like a sync or anything, and then we could just be like, we could get on their list to be like, hey. <laughs> like, yeah, well, well just, <laughs> I may I may have some leverage. It's a fair it's okay. a fair question. Let me see if I can I can broke barter something with right. a, with a little bit of and it will be truly bartering so it's got to be a trade of this for well, that yeah. if there's anything that we can do to help them right and so right. Th let me 
let me take that as a possible, okay. possible thing. I actually think it. getting this one published is going to help them actually. Right, because it, it's, it's, this is restructure the section. And it's like, it feels like this is the, like Meg, you were saying, like this is, this kind of has to go in so we can start editing the other pages, right? So right. it's like the longer that this sits and we're not able to edit the other pages, like just the harder it's going to be to be able to actually make this. Right. And it adds, I mean, it adds a bunch of stuff that I got right out of Daniel's mouth a few okay. years ago that never made it here. So it's not, you know, it's not perfect, but I think, and part of the purpose here too was to get it structured so it was easier to make changes, so. Right, exactly. So that, that way it's like, so since they're doing all this work or if there's any other updates, maybe we can help them. Yeah, it's like, it's in the yeah. smaller pieces. So yeah, it's it's so hard, but if, what would we need, just like a, a thumbs up or is this something where we need them to go through and review everything again or? Well, so what we've got is, yeah, we definitely need Daniel's approval, but Daniel correctly doesn't give approval until he's reviewed it, right? right. He, right, he right, understands no, the danger of, of him approving something and not having reviewed it. I know, I didn't know if he had already read through it and like had made some little changes and then we had gone through, I, I have to look at the history. I, I didn't know if it was just kind of like a, oh, please make these few changes, but everything else looks okay. Or yeah, it was a, so I haven't had, even had a chance to like read past the first document. No, so he definitely had reviewed it. Yeah. So as, and so his, his reviews, but these were, well, he, he had, he definitely has been involved in reviews. Okay. Yeah. That's yes. maybe more like, I didn't know if it was what level of like maybe thumbs up is a bad idea like thumbs up is more of the like oh, okay cool i see you've addressed the questions that i've had like that type of situation versus a i have to go through and right yeah, reread everything and some of them were reorganizing <laughs> so, the reorg like that right one that you're up against was it right this this one is a is actually a it's it's a, a mixing between the content and a structural change right right why you see so much badly organized documentation it is so hard to handle a reorg <laughs> yes yep but, uh... okay so that that one continues so let's let's put on me an action item to talk with the security team see if we can let's call it what it is the security uh, content restructure and I'll go in this weekend and check the merge problems and see a lot of times those resolve quickly. Right. Okay. All right. Any other topics that we should be sure we bring to today's session? So just curious about how the weekly change log process is going because I was not able to um, review it for the past few weeks. So as uh, thanks for asking, as far as I can tell, um, the review process seems to be okay. Uh, for instance, Kevin, Kevin uh, Martins has agreed to, to be a weekly review as well. And Diraj, if you're available occasionally, that's great. We'd love to have it. And I reviewed last week and published the, uh, the content of the change logs was relatively simple. So Kevin and I looked at it today and it, it's about, it's ranged from 10 to 20 changes per weekly that need to be reviewed. So it's, it's not been too bad. Okay, sure. Because I looked at one of the weekly change logs like two weeks ago and it had comments from uh, Tim and another person whose name I find it hard to pronounce. So I was wondering like maybe there was a problem or not. Uh, actually quite the opposite, at least as far as I've seen. Um, my observation now, the week that I was out of the office, I just didn't pay attention. So I didn't worry about them, but was that the process is working quite well. Now, I guess there was one problem, but it's it's a tooling problem, not a, not a, uh, what do you call it? Not really a review problem. We had a tooling problem that 
pull requests labeled removed were not in the change log. And, and that was the script didn't put them in. And I've, um, I've attempted a pull request or attempted a change to fix the tool. And I, I pushed the missing entries into the old change logs. And that was a little bit awkward because as it turns out, when you remove something, it's very important that we tell people. Uh -huh. So I felt a little sheepish about that one. Here we had something that had been removed and had an entry that said, and it needs to be an entry in the upgrade guide. And it was neither in the weekly nor in the upgrade guide for the LTS. So it was, it was, I dropped the ball twice. It wasn't just dropping the ball once, it was drop the ball twice. <laughs> Okay. So, Diraj, did that answer your question? Yes. Thanks. Oh, oh, and I guess there's another class of problem here, which has been that that the automatic change log only considers Jenkins Core, the Jenkins Core repository, and that's been just fine. Until, until we implemented system D oh. in the installer, oh, no. because yeah. that those changes come from a different repository. Ooh, this is gonna be an interesting problem. Well, and, and we solved it just by, by inserting the text manually. Okay, so it good. was, it, but, but it was, it was a, it's a reminder that because Jenkins core is the only thing that contributes. We have to find right placeholders or do those kind of things to get get entries in the change log for things that aren't naturally included by the tool. Right. Still much better than the old days when we had to do the entire work all ourselves. Right, I was just thinking like how trying to remember to pull those things in. Yeah, and and, yeah. and the way I've done it is I, I'm put, I'll typically put marker text into mm. an existing pull request and say, okay. don't forget this, or I'll okay, cool. submit a comment <laughs> yeah. into yeah. the weekly change log saying, be sure you do this. Insert here. Okay, yeah. Okay, exactly. I got you. <laughs> now that, that assumes that we're, that somebody makes that comment and says, hey, don't forget this. All right. Any other topics we need to discuss today? Not for me. Go take Not a little break time. before your next meeting. All right. Let's call it done then. Record. I, I'm, a, I'm badly behind on posting recordings, so it may be a 48 hours or more before I get the recording posted, but I will post the recording eventually. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Oh, by the way, um, Mark and Kristen, do you know that Oleg has COVID? Oh, I no. 